Welcome to Electron Online, and now to give us some better understanding of the forces involved in situations where things are being constrained, or at least they look like they're being constrained, we need to determine, first of all, are they properly constrained? Are they in equilibrium? And then also, what are the forces involved if they are constrained and in equilibrium? So in the first case, we have a, an object here, which is in the form of an L. It's resting here on this bottom uh, by this connector and here it's connected by a short cable and then there's a force of a thousand newtons pulling down on this structure halfway point between where it's supported and at the very end there and so the question then is is this constraint if it is in equilibrium and can we determine the forces at a and the forces at b well it turns out let's see here what happens if this is a solid structure and we're pulling on it right here, this would cause a rotational force or a moment about this particular point. And so that would cause this whole thing to rotate about this point like this. But this short cable right here is preventing it from rotating. It's pulling in the opposite direction. So it looks like this is properly constrained. It's this point right here is, is uh, counteracting all the force of the thousand newtons pushing down so we'll have a thousand newtons of force pushing in this direction and in addition to that we have a moment about this point which causes the cable to pull in this direction that means that this point here has to compensate for it and pull in the opposite direction or at least push in the opposite direction so it looked like everything is properly constrained and we can find indeed the forces at A and at B so let's go ahead and find those so first of all, we can say that it is constrained properly and it is in equilibrium. Now, at A, we're going to experience two forces. One counteracting the thousand newton force this way, so we call this F at A in the y direction, and there's going to be force in this direction, F at A in the x direction. Likewise, at B, since although if this cable wasn't there, the whole thing would rotate in this direction, we can assume that the cable is pulling back in this direction, so we can say F at B in the X direction. Notice that the force at B in the X direction must equal the magnitude of the force at A in the X direction. It will simply be in the opposite direction. All right, so what is the... And then, of course, in the horizontal direction, we can say that F sub A has to equal the magnitude to the thousand newtons. So therefore, we can write that the force at A in the y direction must therefore equal to 1,000 newtons. Notice this comes from the idea that the sum of the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. And so we have a minus 1,000 newtons of force caused by this force right here and plus F sub A in the y direction, so therefore we can conclude that F sub A in the y direction must be 8,000 newtons. What about in the horizontal direction? Notice we have two unknowns, which normally we couldn't solve, except we also have the sum of the moments. The sum of the moments about point A must add up to zero, so this is equal to 1,000 newtons causing a clockwise direction, that's minus 1,000 newtons multiplied times the moment arm of a half a meter, 0 0.5 meters. And then we have F sub B in the X direction, that would be plus F sub B in the X direction, because that is causing a counterclockwise motion, and the moment arm here is a one meter. So from here we can say that F sub B in the X direction is therefore equal to, moving this to the other side, we have uh, a positive now, 1,000 newtons, times 0 0.5 meters and then we have to divide that by the one meter over here one meter the meters cancel out so we know that f sub b in the x direction is equal to uh, now this is interesting this would be equal to uh, 500 newtons but that's the magnitude of it the direction of course would be that is in the negative direction now how does that work as far as uh, with the moments and we have this force right here we have this sort ah F sub B is, of course, in the negative direction, so we have to be careful here. This must be a minus F sub B in the X direction. Notice I'm assuming that F sub B is in the negative direction, so I have to put a negative to compensate for the negative of the F sub B. So that means that this is a negative, and therefore F sub B in the X direction must be equal to minus 500 newtons 
The minus, of course, indicates that it's in the negative x direction. All right, so it's actually not properly to write it like that, so I'm going to make it a vector and put the unit vector like that. Okay, finally, if f sub b in the x direction is a minus 500 newtons, we know that with the sum of the force in the x direction, so let's go right here, the sum of the forces in the x direction add up to zero, so we have the minus 500 newtons over here, plus the force of A in the x direction, and so therefore we can say that the force of A in the x direction, if we make it a vector, is equal to positive 500 newtons in the x direction. So, we have the force at B, the force at A, and uh, let's see, and the force of A in the y direction, where did that go? Oh, right here, and so that would be, let's make that into a vector as well, like that. So there are the three answers that we were looking for. So it's a stable situation and we can determine all of the forces. Now let's go to our second example right here. And notice that this here would cause a moment about point A, would cause the whole thing to rotate like this, and there's nothing here to constrain it from going that direction. The force here only acts in the vertical direction. Let's write that. Let's indicate that. So we have a force in the vertical direction. This is F at B like this only in the vertical direction. Here, this force can only pull in this direction, so that would be F at C, and so neither one of these two forces can prevent this thing from rotating like this, so therefore it is not properly constrained. So You know that this is going to rotate somewhat. We don't know exactly where it will stop. It depends upon the strength of the cable and the play in the cable, so we know that it's not in equilibrium not in equilibrium, and we don't know where it will find its equilibrium point. That will depend upon the number of things that are not determined, cannot be determined. And so because of that, we cannot determine the forces at B, the forces at C, and the forces at A. So therefore, this is, uh, cannot determine the forces. All right, hopefully this was helpful in being able to see the difference between properly constrained situations and not properly constrained situations. If you like this, we'll do a few more examples of that with various scenarios to see when the forces are acting properly and when the forces are not acting properly to constrain the item that's being held back. So stay tuned and we'll have some more examples just like it coming up.